Today, we're going to learn how to get paid like a CEO. In the last video, we learned what it takes to show up as the CEO and some of the challenges and how to win that first battle of putting up your hand and accepting the role. Today, we're going to look at what to do when you get there. Here's our CEO chair. This is the chair that it's really hard to get into and we've fought really hard to get there. And now that we're there, what do we do? Well, the first thing we do is, is we start looking around. So the first thing we need to do is we need to be able to see our company. And if we can see our company, we're gonna be pretty good at seeing what's wrong with it. Now, I like to see it as a kind of a window We've got this big window, we're sitting in our office in the CEO's office and we're looking out over the company. Now, as we discussed in the last video, the first thing we're looking at is that jar of money. Here's our jar of money, here's how much is in it and here's how satisfied or unsatisfied we are with that. So as the chief profit officer, this is a key part of your role. Now, if we want to be good at filling up this jar, we need to understand why money ends up in that jar and where it comes from. And in any business, there's a simple formula that decides how much money ends up in that jar. And in that formula, there's only really two things. One, how many things you sell, and two, how much money you make from each thing. So here, I'll call those production and margin. So production times margin equals profit, and that's gross profit. So our production is essentially our factory, and in any given month, we'll produce a certain number of our products, whether that's loaves of bread or handbags, or whether it's a service business, it'll be how many hours of work you delivered to customers. Our margin is defined by the price minus whatever it costs us to deliver that. So if it's a service, our cost of delivery is, is going to be our labor cost. And for a product, it's our cost of materials and manufacturing. So now as we look out the window over our company, we can see it as a kind of a money machine. And not only can we see the amount of money that's being produced, but we can see what causes it to produce more money and what causes it to produce less money. So it puts us in a really good place when we're the person in charge of how much money this thing makes. Okay, now that we can see, we're gonna be looking for the constraints or barriers that are stopping this machine from making more money. And we're gonna have constraints on the production side and on the margin side. Now on the production side, we may not have enough customers or we may not have enough staff to serve the demand that's coming in. We may be short of equipment or premises and that's limiting how many customers we can serve or efficiency might be holding us back, taking us too long to do the work and therefore we can't serve as many people. To get more customers, the solution might be marketing. To get more staff, the solution might be hiring. Um, for efficiency, the solution might be training, incentives and so on. On the margin side, the two things that are gonna constrain our margin are our pricing and our cost of delivery. So our pricing may be constrained by the quality of our product, we may not be able to charge enough. Um, our sales process may be lacking and therefore we can't get people to pay us the amount of money we want. Our brand may not be strong enough. So for example, we pay more for Coca-Cola than we do for cola, same in your market. And maybe the presentation of your product to the market could use some work. If our cost of delivery is too high, then we might be able to work on our efficiency and our cost of materials. 
So hopefully you can see what we have here now. It's essentially a list of ways to make more money. And we're starting to get a, an understanding of the nature of your job as the leader of this business. A CEO gets paid to see and solve problems for profit. And the, the benefits to you are that you get paid for results, not your hours, and you get paid what you're worth. You get paid based on the impact you have on your business. Now, the takeaway from today is that if you can see your business, you can start solving problems for money. Business owners are really good problem solvers, and I've got no doubt about your ability to perform this role well. But it'll be a lot easier now that we've got the lights on and we can see this money machine for what it really is, rather than banging around in the dark. In our next video, we're going to look at playing the game. So what we've done today is basically our rules to the game. It's that 10 minutes at the start of the, when you're learning a new board game, when someone's explaining the rules and explaining how to win the game. And that's what we've done today. The next step is learning how to get better at playing that game. What we've essentially got is all of these bags of money, our list of opportunities, our list of problems to solve. Each one is a bag of cash waiting to be opened by you. Now, as we start to play this game, we're going to notice a couple of things. One is that bigger bags of cash are better than smaller bags of cash, all things being equal. And two, we're going to realize that bags of cash that we can open faster are more valuable to us than bags of cash that take a long time to open. So if you can open one bag of cash, i.e. solve one problem in three hours, and another problem is going to take you 100 hours to solve. This gives us a way to start prioritizing what's next in our business. This is the game of making money within the context of a small business. And this is the next step to learning how to get good at making money. See you on the next video.